Your style and your flavor make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach Minzy, best round here. Remember that. All right, people, welcome back to the channel. Thanks very much for tuning in to another episode of From Trackside. And you are here on the coach's desk. Big up to the persons on Facebook. Big up to the people them for tuning in. Of course, uh, we have some early birds in the building. We have um, Sports Circle TV. Big up yourself. J. Ross in the building. Just tell me if, if, if someone up and running, J. Ross. Yeah, the sound in you know. Um... Oshian, big up yourself, Oshian. Oshian in the building. You understand? And um, Fresh God. Fresh God in the building. Capo in the building. So, people, we are going to have our guest joining us in short order. So, definitely. All right, Ayana, big up yourself. Definitely, we want to get this interview up and running you understand so how is everybody doing yeah man I wanna say everybody all right everybody all right how was the day hmm talk to you know talk to you people yeah man so yeah man the day was good all right that's so good that's so good um please remember people to like share and subscribe yeah man we are gonna have uh coach bennett on in short order to talk to us about his own development as a coach and have some some good some good discussion where track and field is concerned though yeah man we know now we had it now so as promised we're telling us that we are gonna deal with the thing i would definitely um want to deliver you get what i say can you hear the typing which type in um <laughs> I said the mic bud Hey JPS have a style with them senior <laughs> but that, uh, Hey JPS not easy you know well, me I tell you me I tell you JPS what what I go out with Claude Duncan, big up yourself, you know. Yeah, man. So, next trap meet, people, should be the 20th Diamond League. Oh, no, son, you ready for that? Are you ready for see the big guns them roll out? Boy, I may tell you. Like, we're going to wait longer for some, some bigger guns to roll out. And I hope um, Sasha Lee Forbes will be on demand. You understand? Hope Sasha Lee Forbes will be alright. You get what I say? Yeah, man. Big up, Claude Duncan. Make sure to like the video, the people. Like the video. If you have not subscribed, do so. So that you can become a part of the family. Yeah, man. We are, we are, we are growing like a family over here, the people. See it? So, so the thing set. All right, so, all right, so me in the meantime, between time, um, me see a little thing with, 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 with Shelly, with the advert, with, um, with, with, with Shakiri. 
and it look like it look like people really feel a way that you know Shelly the 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 the, 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 the mega star and Shakiri mega in her own right and she she rise fast you understand and uh, definitely people think say uh, yo the thing hack probably Shakiri at the game but me not think I hack the game enough people remember both of them are um Um, what do you call it now? Both of them are Nike athletes, you know. So if them repeat, boy, I me mean, not think it should be a problem. You know why I me mean, think the problem is, or what the problem is, is because the people them realize, say, ah, Shakir, which is a US athlete. This way, the problem lies, you know. But now I've got to forgive Shakir, you know, you know, you know so what she do with something, man. Come on, man. We don't have to forgive Shakir and our team. You get what I say? And again, you can't really put anything too much on that because... um, Big up Keisha. Because Shakir help out... You get what I say? Help out Sasha Lee. So she gets some fed up in her heart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So Samantha Allen, what go on? A long time we don't see you know, Samantha. Big up yourself, you know. Big up Samantha. Come on, Samantha and I building. A long time we don't see Samantha. One it's a swan song and the other starting to build her legacy. Yup. I remember I said Shelly uh, um, a pack up, you know. So, I don't think we'll take it serious still. I may do my own, my own little, um, a little research, talk to a marketer, and pretty much, I must say, you want to know if we take too, too deep, yeah, man. And then nothing to kill up self. And then You see me I say? Yeah man, I know nothing to kill up self over. You get me? So make with us go on go on all the vibes, don't. Yeah, man, we could go on and level the vibes, man. Oh, you've been watching. All right, big up yourself. Appreciate that. Uh, Jordan, I said disrespectful. Worse when them now give Shelly where she deserves. Instead, I give that girl and them will come copy her look. <laughs> well... A lot of people don't see it that way, Jordan. That's the thing. So, make us see how it go. Make us see how it go. So, people are still waiting on, on Coach Bennett to forward. Um, and probably I try log on, is it? Mm. I have to give them a little time sometime. You know? Time between time. Don't. Make sure to share the video, you know, people. Share the video so that people can. You know, be in tune to our God. Hey, you know, sir, you see, people them are going to watch about this. They are going to say, stop chatting. <laughs> but when I say, oh, we are doing a stream, I'm enough to talk. That, that may I say, you know. But, anyways, all right, the boss, the boss, the boss, click on, you know, people. So, you know, you know, share the video and we're going to get right into it. So, we say we're going to bring on the, um, the coach and he has come on. So, he has delivered on the end of the bargain. So, people, put your hands together and welcome Coach Corey Bennett.
Coach Bennett, welcome to the coach's desk. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thank you uh, as well for, for, for joining the show. Uh, the people have been waiting to hear from you. Um, we have been on a little, a little series. Uh, we have interviewed a few coaches from Champs and who, have, who probably would have been at the character games. So, um, having you on the program is, is, is indeed a privilege, you know, so that we can have some more discussion hearing what is happening in the minds of, of, of the coaches around town. You understand? Right, uh, you, you, uh, the coaches have been doing an excellent job in terms of the athlete preparation and stuff like that. So, we just want to hear what is uh, you have to say in, in respect to that. But before we get into the details, does this place or this space, Coaches the Show is a, is a safe space relaxed space you don't have to feel like no little jitters or anything you just express yourself or you feel like expressing yourself mm. all right cool yeah, man. all right cool so um for some for, 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 for um some clarity so uh for persons who don't know um just tell us who is Corey bennett well um i think for the purpose of this program i'm the coach of heidel and also the coach at calabar high school um, I'm in my second year as a coach at Calabar, and I'm in my, wow, forever at Heidel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pretty much is Corey Bennett for now. Um, you, you know of the nickname, right? The moniker that, 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 that the, the both schools have gotten. High bar? High bar, yeah. Oh, yeah. so you're well aware of our gun, man. Yeah, I, I heard it a couple of times, well, yeah. All right. Um. So you you you're you're involved in coaching right now. But is there ever a time you were involved in sports, participating in sports in your early years? Yeah. I mean, I did. Um. Track and field from I was at Wilmer's Prep. I went to Wilmer's mm -hmm. Prep, and I uh, went on to Wilmer's Boys School and continued all the way up to Boys and Girls Champs. Um. I think at the time might might have just been boys champs only, <laughs> but um, yeah, went on to college as well on a scholarship. Did both sports, football and track and field as well. Studied in New York. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that that that's that's my involvement in the grassroots level. Come up through 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 sports, predominantly football and track and field. Okay, and um. Not not to pry too much, but where where that inspiration came from in becoming a coach? Was it your early years experience as a player or something along the journey would have caused you to? Might have been a combination of, of stuff. Um my mother is a is a teacher. Um and I think my way of just falling in her teacher footsteps was to coach. I mean, um, I I started doing some coaching while in college. Um, mm -hmm. My own teammates, organizing our sprint relay teams and stuff like that. Um, coached some long jump um, persons as well. So it kind of came through that. And I think once I graduated and came back to Jamaica, um, I, I, went, I went to work with my mother's school, Heidel, immediately. And it just kind of blossomed from there. So the inspiration really came for me just wanting to teach, teach persons how to do stuff. And it was born out of the fact that I was involved heavily in sports and loved sports. So it kind of was born out of those, that, that combination of stuff, yeah. But, um, okay. But in, is there a particular coach that you draw that uh, inspiration from or one that you would have basically emulated on your coaching journey or um, you just I, believe in your talent um i you know i've i've been blessed to have been coached by some of the greats um i've been coached from as early when i was in prep school by uh, Mauricio ventura um a kingston college sports billy so to speak um i went on to in high school, I was coached by Stephen Francis himself, Fitz Coleman, 
um, in football, I was coached by Liebert Aleman, um, Frankie Lawrence. So I've, I've been blessed to have been coached by some persons who would be considered great in many circles. And um, yeah, I, I think I've gotten a lot of inspiration and, and I've got a combination of styles from, mm -hmm. from persons that, that, that coached me. Um, the discipline side of it really came from Stephen Francis and Liebert Aleman in particular. Which they they have really had no nonsense approach to to, to, to their coaching, um, and then I had I got some style or some traits I believe from Fitz Coleman who showed some level of patience um, in his preparation as well. So yeah, I, I think I've had a good 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 cadre of coaches that I learned from, and I believe that that kind of helped to mold who I am today as a coach. Awesome, that 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 sounds good, man. So. It's like preparing a pot of soup and all the ingredients are yeah. placed in it. Yeah. And that, that, that basically gives it, it its flavor. So that, 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 is, that is good. But um, just to talk a little bit about your playing and running um, um, days, what event did you do in trucks and what position did you play on the football field? Well, let's start with football. I mean, I was a defender. Um... Predominantly. In, in my first year in Manning Cup, I don't know why Liebert Aleman put me as a striker, but I predominantly played defence. Um, mm -hmm. Centre half or any of the wing back, sometimes even central midfield as well. Um, I believe was a, as a hard tackler. <laughs> um, and as such, I think I was best suited to play somewhere behind there. Um, track and field, I, I did mostly sprints and jumps. And in my last two years, I did the multi-event. Mm -hmm. All the while, and the multi-events, I believe, helped me to be able to coach various disciplines um, to, a, to a decent level. Because I think I have an appreciation of, of most of the disciplines in track and field. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I pretty much did the sprints and the jumps. I, I, I did it multi-events. Um, in my last two years of, of high school. Okay, so now that that tells me or open up my, my eyes now to why Heidel High School basically over the years would have always been doing well in, in, in the multi events. That um very difficult event on the girls side at Champs. So now I understand. <laughs> All right coach. Um coaching education is 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 deemed important uh i want you to give your take on that versus vicarious coaching what are your thoughts on that or is coaching education really hindering the athletes from transitioning and when i say hindering i i, I pretty much mean that because of the uh what you call it the level of knowledge from these coaches they tend to turn it up a little bit on the high school level athletes i might i might say a lot there but um, if you want me to repeat the question i could um if i can if i think i know what you're saying pretty much um mm -hmm. i sometimes sometimes you know a man's fault can be that he knows too much mm -hmm. and, and and sometimes we have to be careful what we read um I, I mean, plainly, I mean, most times persons who put things on the internet or persons who put things in the space where persons can um, get their hands on, so to speak, are most times persons who coach at the professional ranks. Right. So coaches just pull down programs from various, I would want to say unknown entities and unknown persons and apply it to very young kids. Um, and you find that, you know, any real coach, <laughs> and, and, and if you think of even Stephen Francis right now, he's not really gonna put everything on, on the internet. So you may get, get some very generic programs. And, you know, the, I've, I've seen programs where it says, and the athlete needs to come through four 300s in 42 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what that, that, that what level of athlete that that, that, that is. Now, mm -hmm. 
I mean, take a take a thirteen year old boy or girl and say, listen, we need to come through four thirds in forty two seconds, which is virtually impossible to 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 the, to the type of athlete. Um, so we have to we have to we have to know what we're reading and how to interpret it. Um, some coaches read wild widely and sometimes wildly, and sometimes it is to the detriment of the athlete, as you said. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, I think I think coaches for the most part are doing a great job. Um, I think um, the level of or the standard of, of, of track and field now that exists in Jamaica is way beyond what existed probably 10 years ago. Um, and not to say that, you know, we never had great coaches then. I just think that a lot has changed. Um, and so the, you see it in the production of the, the times and the distances. And, you know, athletes don't change. You know, these are the same persons that existed years ago. It's just that sometimes when you apply things a little differently, um, you get better results. And, and, and what we're seeing now is the results that have gone to a different level for, for whatever reason that exists. Um, mm -hmm. 9.99, 10.9 um, are ridiculous times. But on the other hand, you have a young man named Usain Bolt who many moons ago ran 20.3 and 45 something and, and and that pretty much is still relevant to date but i think the times generally have gone much faster if you look at the hurdles times mm -hmm. way really to the roof rapidly uh, yeah and and, and and things just seem to be going you know in a, in, a, in a positive way in a, in a very high standard um because a lot of coaches have improved their own skill set mm -hmm. and are, are able to, to deliver um, to young minds and young kids um, what they want in a more effective way now than probably a couple of years ago. So so you, you'd you attribute that to um, coaches' education then? Yeah, yeah. I think coaches have gotten a lot wiser. A lot of coaches mm -hmm. understand um, the microcycle and the microcycle process mm -hmm. um, more than they did probably you know years ago. Coaches understand things outside of coaching that, that can aid coaching. Mm -hmm. um, as nutrition things such as rest um, we have probably better physiotherapists now or treatments now that can aid mm -hmm. her becoming better um, and so things have improved um, whether we like it or not um, and yeah I, I think the coaching education can help um, I think in a very small percentage it has hurt you know because we look at a program like Mushet High School where mm -hmm. coaches doing extremely well a good friend of mine got Smite out there doing extremely well um, with with a young lady and, a, and his, his own son, um, Johan Romaldo Smite. Um, it, it just it just it lends to the fact that persons have gotten a lot better. Uh, whether yes. we like, it, you know, coaching doesn't sit at anybody's house. You know, it is it is very free for persons to to and sometimes experiment and look at different different ways of doing things. And what what is obvious now is that coaches are better, and and we see it in the results of of our athletes on the track. Awesome. And and this jumped out at me. Um because with the with the expertise of the coaches have gone up to the roof. Yeah. Um would you say that the coaches also have to have that talent that they can, you know, disseminate that uh, level of knowledge to? Or In because of the knowledge they can basically build anything um from the ground. Yeah, I mean, different coaches have, again, different skill sets. And different coaches have different eyes for talent. And different coaches have different ways of delivering even the same program. I mean, you can give probably 10 different coaches the same exact program and it's delivered a lot differently. Right. So so it comes down to sometimes the coach's personality, sometimes the coach's own experiences as an athlete or just as a teacher, sometimes the coach's ability to stick to a task and sometimes the coach's ability to adjust midway mm -hmm. in the stream. Um, right. Sometimes we, we have a program and somewhere along the line, probably midway the program, we have to make adjustments. Some coaches can't. And some coaches just will not and will refuse to, to make adjustments. Um for me personally, I mean I tend to look at the you know the reaction of the, of the athlete a lot. And there are times where you have to cut off one or two sets <laughs> from mm -hmm. and there are times you just have to just change the whole program altogether 
by the time you get to the field. I mean, you look at the kids and the kids are probably just really tired and drained from probably a day or two before. You just have to make some adjustments. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the different persons have different skill sets to make adjustments, and I think it's a sm the small adjustments uh, re re great results. Definitely. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And as you spoke about um, Coach Smite, um, I had him on the, the, this, this said program last week, and he, he made mention of you being integral in him um keeping his son yeah and it he, he believes that um it, it was a very wise and prudent um conversation you and him had that would have contributed to that and he, he paid homage to that conversation so congrats on that and yeah, since since we're in the congratulatory mode congratulations on heidel winning that title of people and from them time the coach for company show you know. <laughs> but the man is a busy man because he's a top coach, you know. So this is belatedly done. Congratulations. Congratulations yeah, on that um enormous feat by uh, your athlete Alana Reed and others of course, but this one um far exceeds some of the other performances that, that sub eleven first to have ever happened. Talk to us about those two experiences, winning champs and that tremendous feat done by Alana Reed. Um, let's, let's start with Alana. Um, mm -hmm. Alana is a, a good athlete. Alana has tremendous talent. Um, Alana just aligned her talent in that last year, especially to her work ethic. And mm -hmm. sometimes you know, no matter how you give a good program to a donkey, it will never be the worst horse. And I think Alana is a top class horse. She's a she's a thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. And she just aligned her work ethic to her talent. And she got the results that she 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 really deserved. Um and if you think about it, the year before she lost to Karika Hill, who I believe left school prematurely. Um and she would have surpassed so many greats before her. Um, Alana, Alana has tremendous ability. And, and I think that we were just able to align her discipline to training along with her ability in that, that especially that final year. But she, you know, she did well years before that. And I think the results just kind of was kind of what was due to her last year. Um, in terms of Heidel, I mean, we, we, we have a model that we don't chase championships. Um, and I know it sounds a little odd to persons to hear that. Mm -hmm. we, we really try to, to go at doing well per event and try to get the best out of athletes per event. So Alana Reed, let's get the best out of you in the 100 meters and the 200. Onika Makanok, let's get the best out of you in the 400 and the four hurdles. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, the model we, 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 we took last year and even this year. And when persons wrote us up even this year that we were going to get beaten by 100 points, we brought it down to a level of respectability that a lot of persons couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. We just believe in just taking the event, not the, not the whole championship. And, and I believe when we, when, once we take it in small pieces or small doses, it kind of helps you in the long run. Um, so we don't. Well, coach, that's, so, sorry to cut your code, but isn't that somewhat a philosophical statement? Because your 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 eyes really on the prize when you set it out in 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 small portions, you know. Um, there, there is no coach who would not want to win a title. Right? Yeah, but you have to be very realistic, especially with what you know you're working with. So you don't mm -hmm. title as the major goal. Right, right. Goal is to get. Corey Bennett or Zico Bennett or Alana Reed to be the best version of themselves. And I always believe in just, in, when I, even when I coach football, I, I believe in making the goalkeeper better, making the, the wing backs better. And ultimately, when they make each piece of that team better, then ultimately you have a better team. Mm -hmm. The thing is that we have to be realistic. I can't use 35 girls to compete against 70 and 80 girls for a championship. You're going to come up short. There are a lot of mm -hmm. events that we did not enter. Right. So you go to a championship with so many missing pieces thinking that you can always stand up to the middle of eight, 90 girls on a team. We had 
35, 36 girls. Under normal circumstances, that can't cut it. So we have to be realistic with our targets and understand that this is just staying early. Um, no pun intended, but just to get <laughs> things along what we thought we can achieve. So if we thought we could achieve the class one girls 100 meter title, let's go at that. If we thought we couldn't get the class three girls 80 meter hurdles title, let's try and see if we can get a girl in the finals. So we have to be very specific to what we wanted. Um, the good thing about the program at Hyda is that I would want to say 90 to 95 percent, and maybe higher, higher than that, will always hit PBs at champs. And I think, um, apart from the physical, I think a lot of it would, would to do with the mental, we're able to get them to get their best at championship. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, that's commendable. But um, when the thought came to you and you conceptualized Idol's hopes of being at champs um, on the onset, what, what, what really sparked that um, inner drive to say, you know what, I'm going to be entering girls' champs? Let me try out this. Let me test the water. I know you said that your 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 mom was a teacher and you always wanted that 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 part of you. So you know, sports would have been um the the the, the driving force behind that. Was that uh, the real reason or self actualization? That was, that was the reason why I got into to, to public coaching, but not mm -hmm. the reason the champs. Okay. Uh, so we used to have our girls and boys go off to various schools in the past. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking real top talents. Mm -hmm. Reason or another, they would all, uh, quite a few of them would just fade away. I mean, when you think of a person like Odin Skeen, Dejo Russell, I'm talking about Dirk, we had some great ones leave us. Some did very well, some not so well. Um, and I remember my, my assistant, Mr. Richard Johnson, who's still with me now, um, said to me one day, why don't we enter champs? And I said, no, that, that can't work. You know, we, there's no way we can enter big champs. I mean, that's, that's beyond us. And he's like, no, let's just see how best we can get some of our kids from Heidel Prep and see if we can move them on and let's see how best we can make a difference. And I'm like, nah, I mean, but anyway, he talked me, talked me into it. We, we applied to Issa. We got the go ahead in 2010 for our first champs. And we placed 11th with, with, with five class four girls. We were 11th at champ. We just class four girls. Mm -hmm. And we just built on that. Um, and I remember we won we won the long jump that year <laughs> with, with a girl who came from a prep school, Amanda Carty, and we won the we won the hurdles. Bearing in mind, we only had one hurdle at Heidel, one. <laughs> but we won the hurdles. We had two person in the hurdles finals. Um, some one are, flight or one single one. Single <laughs> the hurdle. So yeah. We, we would kill it to the first hurdle. <laughs> um, and we, used, we just would use trap meets to just get used to, at the time, seven flights of hurdles. So, um, yeah, we just kind of paid attention to that. I mean, we were third in the four by one. I'll never forget. We got we got some fights in the high jump and stuff. So, um, we scored four to six points and we were 11th at champs. And we just kind of built from there. Mm -hmm. So, then here we, had, we got back some class for, and then we had a first year three sets. So, that's kind of how we journeyed into champs and, until this day, where we have where it scored th over three hundred points. But yeah. Okay, that's good. And and how would you attribute over the years, um, Idol's prowess? You know, you're the, you're the, you're the head man, um, you're the head coach. But how do you um attribute Idol's prowess to your your technical team? I mean. You know, I, 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 I couldn't do it without, without my, my coaches, to be honest. Um, each coach brings along something that I can't bring. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, Richard Johnson has been my my right hand for, for all the years that I've been coaching. Um, he brings something that I've never seen in anybody else, which is just straight up passion and, and, and stick to -tiveness and just um, business-like towards the duty of, of coaching. Um, he hates to lose. <laughs> he hates to have substandard um, performances. He can't stand it. 
And that keeps me on my toes because when I will get relaxed, I say, nah, don't worry about it. He's like, nah, we're not going to put up with that. So he's just my, my check. He's like sitting on my shoulder every time, like in my conscience. Uh-huh. And he that. A lot of other coaches that I've had over the years, I mean, we had a Anthony Mendes, may his soul rest in peace. He's such a good person and a dear friend uh, that we lost um, sometime last year. Um, he was an inspiration. You know, he, he came from the old school, but he was yeah. so wise. He was a wise, wise, wise man. You know, I've never met anybody with his level of wisdom for track and field. And his experiences helped us a lot. And um, so I've been, again, you know, in my own coaching world at Heidel, I've had some very good persons around who really added serious and great value to, to what we're doing. And um, yeah, it is, it is, it is really, it has really helped us along the way just to, to mold us into what we are now. Yeah. Okay, that's, that, that's good. Um, there's this talk about big school versus small school and, you know, the whole recruitment thing. Your thoughts on, 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 on this recruitment tug of war that is taking place? Well, I'm a small school, so probably it's a high. <laughs> no, we're not that boy, not name and size, no, you know. <laughs> well, name, you, you can't be small school. <laughs> well, I'm a small school, man. I mean, but the truth is, um, a, lo- a lot of potential athletes coming out of primary school or even prep school, um, tend to want to lean towards tradition. Um, and no matter how well a school does, probably athletically, and let's take, for example, Moshet High School, who's doing extremely well. Mm-hmm. It is probably hard for Moshet to get a, a primary school child from in and around his area, as opposed to probably a more established program like probably I mean, I don't know the schools in the area, but like probably Herbert Morrison or probably um, St. Elizabeth Technical down that side or Monroe College because, or Connell College, because the tradition, parents and persons tend to always follow the tradition. Mm-hmm. It's very, um, I want to say a, a person will take a chance with a program without the tradition to send their child to. Um, but I think it is breaking slowly. Um, some persons have an idea what will work and what won't work for their children. And sometimes they, they will take a chance and it pays off. But, I mean, when you think of a girl like Sabrina Dockery at Lakovia, who probably is not a traditional school in terms of track and field, but she's doing extremely well. I, I'm almost sure, and I may be guessing, but when she won that 100 meters at the curve on the 20, yeah, I, that may be that that may be Lakovia's first medal. I, I may be I may be wrong, but um, it was such an awesome run. But I, you know, I'm hoping that the day will come when things level off somewhat. Um, I don't think it is level yet. I don't think it will ever be level because, especially on the boys side, you know, it's it's, it's even rough over there. You know, it, <laughs> it heavily, heavily, heavily segregated in terms of where the average boy wants to go and where they don't want to go so yeah big but, program. but, but, but the big the, the program that you're in would have fallen under that part that 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 part of it as well was boys want to go to to, to your school um that, that that might be so that might be so and, and we do have boys who want to go to, to Wilmer's boys and to St. Diego high and all over. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's a, 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 a wider spread of, of, of schools, maybe, in and around the corporate area that boys will have their choices. Um, I mean, I, I, this is my second year there. You know, it's, it's, we do get some boys who show some serious interest in coming to Calabar. And you do have some who just don't want to come to Calabar, <laughs> you know, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's just a matter of developing the ones that want to come to you and make the best of, of those persons. Yeah, because you'll never get everybody. And just like Casey will never get the boys who want to come to Calabar and probably JC. But you do have, everybody has a set of boys who really want to go in their program. 
they have to just make it work. What what separate and apart from 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 the champs rivalry? What it comes on to being amicable with 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 each coach um out there that that is fine though. Fine for who? In, <laughs> well, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't know about the others. I'm asking you so you could answer well, for yourself. You know, I I I've been privileged to serve on some national team with some of these quote unquote rival coaches. Mm -hmm. And I think we do have mutual respect for each other's body of work. Okay. Um, it, it, whether we like it or not, I mean, we're rivals for a reason because we're obviously doing something right. Um, and I think that um, it's no secret that probably Haida's rivals are Eden Allen, St. Diego, Homewood. You want to assume that the top schools that exist. And clearly, for me and from where I'm sitting, they, these programs have excellent coaches. Um, Michael Dyke is an excellent coach. Keelan Agulber is an excellent coach. Um, and, and as such, we, we, we always will respect each other's work. Um, there's no way we could go into a championship and think that, oh, no, I'm not going to go there. So, oh, you better think again. You know, and we, mm -hmm. we tend to know each other's strengths. Um, I, I don't know how they view me, but I view them in a very high regard. And I think mm -hmm. that's an excellent job in their respective programs. And likewise, oh, okay. on the I've, I've served on national teams with um, Kingston College head coach Leaford. And I've served also with um, Neil Harrison, a couple, couple World Under 20 teams as well. And, and they're both excellent persons and good managers of their programs. And they bring a lot of quality to their programs as well. Okay. All right. That that what that question wasn't um written down, in it? it was just a spur of the moment question. But yeah. in terms of preservation of our athletes, a lot of talks have been happening over the years about how the coaches basically uh give the athletes too much work, they overwork, and all of these um conversations come up when they don't transition. Uh, how, how could we, as a nation now, a body of coaches, a cadre of coaches, how could we basically preserve some of these top-notch talents? I mean, first of all, you, you have to assume that um, it is the world that has let them, you know, afford them to stop. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 in the early days, I used to watch... Um, Usain Bolt as a young man doing the Tobes and the Forger and, and and you know I I don't I didn't see any reason why he needed to stop. Um, I'm not sure what they're suggesting. I remember this whole argument came about when this young man from Kingston College, Javon Matteson, probably fell twenty meters from the line as a class four boy and they thought that he it was due to overwork. Um, but barring a few injuries, Javon Matt is probably one of the best sprinters I've seen technically in class one. And I don't think falling at the line in class four was going to make him be any healthier in class one. Um, in a person of different makeups, programs go to different transitions. Um, I can't say that it is the fact that Johan Blake ran on their four by one and their four by four team, along with two individual events, along with Nicola Schmid is a reason why Johan Blake did not win an Olympic individual medal. I can't say that. Because Johan Blake is an extremely good talent and an excellent talent. It's just things happen along the way. Not everybody will transition. We hope that our quality talents will transition. It just doesn't work like that. If you look at some of these primary school grades or these prep school grades, they probably stop at first one, and that's it. Like, yeah, you, yeah. How did I recruit this one? It's just not for everybody. Persons go through different developmental processes and persons tend to go in different and various directions in life. There are many persons who leave high school and just don't want to be a doctor or a nurse or, or a policeman or a thief. You know, they just have different things that they want to do in life. It's not everybody wants to be a track and field athlete, especially to the next level, because that requires some tremendous and serious discipline towards the sport. Not many persons have that um, or want to pursue that. So in person, I was quick to say burnout. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really subscribe to that. I mean, yes, you do have cases where I think they push athletes a little too much, but for most times, 
I mean, I, I just think this the child just has, for the reason, going in a different direction with their lives. All right. So this notion of, of, of burned out, I, I, I tend to have a problem with it, you know, coach. But, I mean, it is what it is. Um, the person sometimes on the outside, they don't understand what takes place on the training ground. And yeah, I think, I think especially if it the... take place, it would be the training ground, not the competition ground. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, can, I, can, I, can, I can actually say I agree with that part. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that is that. Um, what are uh, some of the plans for your charges um, for the remainder of the season? Uh, well, you have World Under 20 coming yeah, up, um, some meets couple, overseas. Yeah, a couple of persons would have just come back from, from the character games where I thought they did pretty well. You know, being a couple of days right after the five day championship. Um, so rest would have to come into play initially. And then they start to prepare for those who are a part of the world and the, um, they try to play the latest teams would start to prepare probably sometime this week for that. Um, and, and this is a world under 20 year. Um, you know, it is ironic that I share the, some of the same views as to the reason why USA has pulled out of the world under 20. It's just way mm -hmm. too late. Um, I cite it as one of the reasons because it seems, if I'm, if I'm correct, I think the world under 20 happens around the last weekend in August. Yes. Now, when you think of, when you start, to, when you start your program in September, to, to go 12 months in a year, it is ridiculously tough on a, on a young athlete. And that's where mm -hmm. we talk about out. Um, because, especially because they're not professional athletes, they still have to go to school, they still have to do the things as a, as a normal student because they're not going to get a different uh, marking scale for their CSEC exams and, and, and internal exams. They still have to do what is required as a regular student. And to stay up at night, to study and do homework after training, and then to take this all the way down to August. It is almost unbelievable that you would find after your World Under 20 trials at the end of June, what keeps you going to the end of August? And yeah. it's tough, you know, we have to make some decisions there. Um, but yeah, but it exists. Um, there are persons who, who should, should go off to college, and I don't think they should go off to college tired. I think persons should ease into college so they, they, can, they can transition properly and not go there. Straight. I mean, we had a girl, Garel White, who left straight from Kenya and flew to her school in LSU. And mm -hmm. that was tough. That was, that was a tough one. You know, so I think sometimes persons need a break. Um, we never did much last year after Champs or after Penn Relays, um, apart from probably Alana, who went on to some other meets. But the majority of the team just took a break because we knew that this year was going to be a little longer than most. Um, for some person or so. But those are the plans. I mean, let's see who can go all the way to, to first of all, the end of June, you know, being that they're going to be in, in exam mode still and see who can, if they if they make the team continue for another two, three months towards the end of August. Yeah, that, that is quite um, tedious. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm not certain if that is one of the reasons why US pulled out because they would have done it uh, before. But this, this reason that you made mention of is seems quite um understandable. Yeah. They, they mentioned that as one of the reasons. They also oh, they mentioned, mentioned it. Okay. Also mentioned as one of that the place is going through some unrest the area. Um mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. And they're all all into um security of, of, of their their citizens. So yeah, that is understandable. All right. Um talk to us about Brianna. Her exploits so far this season, 60 meter indoor champion, running some fast times, running a, a, a 10 87 outdoor first, um, albeit we needed. Um, your thoughts on, 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 her, on, on her progress and where do you see her um, going from there? Yeah, I mean, well, kudos to her coach. Um, when she didn't turn up that much last season and the coach said he was taking his time with her, you know, he came out of criticism, you know, mm -hmm. because we're accustomed, especially in recent times, just seeing Brianna being Brianna and just True. being a pack. 
So for her to take a year off, especially the fact that she had one more year in high school, persons just thought that, well, the coach must her up, or she's not interested that much anymore. Um, he was just taking his time. And um, kudos to what he has done with her. Um, she's obviously physically stronger now, just looking at her physique. Um, and, she, and, you know, and you more than anybody knows how talented Brianna is. It's just a matter of keeping her healthy and, you know, changing her technique for the better. And I think Brianna is just extremely talented from she was five or six years of age. But she's getting what she deserves. Brianna is Brianna, Brianna did extremely well this season. Um, and, I, and, I, and I read where the coach mentioned that it is more marketable for her to run the hundreds. Everybody believes, in, and, and at one point I included myself, that Brianna would be best served as a tour did athlete. Mm -hmm. he, did, he did say internationally and even professionally, it's best for you to do the 100 and the 200. Um, and I can see why he said that. Um, but she's doing well. She did well. Um, her 10-8 um, as, as an opener, albeit with Menated, was remarkable. Um, I said to her when, she, when we spoke that I thought she ran the 100 like a 60. So she was good up to 60 mm -hmm. and the body down after 60. Um, so just for her now to transition from the shorter distance to the longer one. Um, but I, I think she'll be fine. I mean, Brianna seems to be enjoying her track and field and her 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 sporting success. And I, and I believe she's going to she's going to disturb somebody. I can't I can't say who, but she's going to disturb. <laughs> that that is right. But but you made mention of that. Um, she ran the one hundred like a sixty meter. But I I think it probably would have come from muscle memory because right. she would hey. have been running As more sixty right so than. So is that after 60 meters in the 100 meter race, her body just kind of went to sleep. Right. And remember, she has not run like a, a 100 meter like close to two years as well. Right. So that so, could have uh, contributed to, to, to uh, her last um, 40 meters of that race. You'll be fine. Though. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. With, with some more races under her belt, definitely. Um, she has a very high ceiling and, well, probably the sky. <laughs> but definitely. All right. Um, did you watch the the, the Alana Reed opener? I did. I did. Your thoughts on it? Well, um, the first my first impression would be disappointing, um, but I don't know where she's at in her program. Let me just say that. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a coach, sometimes we get judged unfairly um, <laughs> as, as an athlete especially who so much is, is expected from her she may get judged unfairly but um i believe just watching forget about the time just watching her run um it was not the typical alana that we're, we've come accustomed to seeing um but I'm, I'm i'm hoping and i'm sure that she'll get it right um as the season progresses i think she needs to race some more I thought she could have had a somewhat, somewhat of an indoor season, even though she lives in Florida. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I believe the first thing, based on what everybody would have expected from her, that it was, you know, it, I think it was relatively disappointing. And I'm sure she disappointed herself. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it wasn't enough, a better term. It would, it would have seemed as if she was basically going through the motion. And that's how it looked to me. But, I mean, like you said, she should be disappointed. And I know that she's going to go back to the yes. join, um, join board. But, um, Coach, since, since, since you're here, I, I, I have to ask you this, you know, because a lot of the Alana Reed fans, the Jamaican faithful supporter of track and field, and they would have loved this talent, um, Alana Reed. She made a decision to go overseas. You were the one who had her before. What what really happened there? Somebody I call your phone right there with me ask a question. Eh? <laughs> we're not hearing you, coach. We're not hearing you. No, we're not hearing you. 
We're not hearing you. You, you probably have to go, um, um, once the call come in, we're not going to hear you. So probably just log on uh, and log off and come back on. No, we're not hearing you. Just, just, just log off and come back on. No. <laughs> we're not hearing a coach. No, we're not here. Just, 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 just log off, man, and come back on. Yeah, that's how it works. Sometimes, once a call comes in, it just throw away the um the audio. Okay, come on, try to get some assistance. All right. In the meantime, people, you can just get some questions ready, um, because we uh we I want some questions from the chat room to coach, and once there are not questions that I would have asked already, then we definitely can um throw them out at him. So you can just get your questions ready, and. Uh, big up yourself, disciple. Big up to everybody in the in the in, in the chat room. One kino say my coach, you know, you know. Big up yourself, you know, one kino. Mm -hmm. Um nice discussion. But I missed it, but I want to know if ill healthy. Yeah man, it's good to run up a hill, man. That's a healthy thing. Big up yourself, um, Fabian. All right, so he's he's coming back on. All right. Yes, coach, we're hearing you now. I'm sorry, but I, I, I call. Yeah, man. Once a call comes in, it's gonna um like take away the sound. But it gone again. The sound gone again. Oh my God. What's happening? No, no, not hearing you. Yeah, you have to do the process. Like, oh, you're muted this time. You're muted. Still mute. All right, it open now. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, man. Uh, again, and I, I, I just really wish her agents and herself um, the best of luck with that transition, that move. She's still mm -hmm. young. Um, I really hope that she gets it right. I believe she will get it right. Um, and I'm just hoping she's training properly, as. Jamaica depends on her for her future. And that's that's all you have to say on the matter? I don't know much more to say, you know. I mean, again, you know, that was a decision made by herself and her agents. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, all right, kind of disappointed because many persons uh, were thinking that um, this would have been a good match. You would have gotten her to that uh promised land so to speak of sub eleven and definitely it would have, it would have been a a good thing to know that somebody would you would have been with for so many years to continue the process of getting you to the top. But that didn't happen and the camp that she went, a lot of the Jamaican fans are still wary about that. But um we heard we heard you. We heard you. I know it, it, it must be a, a a tough thing to to see one of your star athlete um go but coach i see uh several uh other athletes are returning to the island is is there something that is happening that we're not really hearing from these athletes while they are returning so we, we see two two athletes from your 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 two of your past athletes returning ashanti moore and um cheyenne um, is there something that the athletes aren't saying? Are they not being treated fairly? Is it because they are Jamaican in a land where they are competing against those those individuals? You know, I I again I can't speak to that. <laughs> I have no idea. But I just know that um not all that glitters is gold. Mm -hmm. These athletes tend to 
go away thinking that they're going on to greener pastures. Um, yes, there may be more opportunities that exist, but I believe the hardcore training and the way we train here um, that have made these athletes who they are um, is what they need to come back to. Um, I, I suspect you may have a lot more persons returning. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes probably sooner than later. And I've said to all my athletes generally, if you look at our Olympic medals, especially in recent times, they were they were they were, they were ninety nine percent homegrown, mm -hmm. um, and I think probably the exception and probably of a VCB who would have done well um, while 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 training overseas. But I think um, we have great coaches out here. You know, we have um, Stephen Francis and and, and Glenn Mills, Maurice Wilson, to name a few. Um, we have, you know, I call him Fall Dog, but you know, yeah. he, he he coaches the four hundred to, to, to a different level. Yeah, um, man. we do have a lot of great coaches who have been doing extremely well, um, and I think there are enough options here for persons to still do well in one of those programs. Um, and I think, and I said it to to coach Michael Dyke as well that he should consider keeping one or two of his athletes because I don't know that there is. A night and day experience from coaching a girl to run 10 9 as opposed to coaching a girl to run 10 8, which would make her very competitive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, persons will always challenge that statement, but I think that we do still have the knowledge and the know how, how to get it done here. It's just that a lot of these athletes figure it is a, a better climate overseas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that that is a that is a, a pretty decent answer there. Um, yeah, but for me though, coach, I do believe that when they make these decisions, and and decisions come with a hit or a miss, mm -hmm. you can make a decision to stay here and it still doesn't work out. You That's can true. make a decision to go and it worked out, and vice versa. So, at the end of the day. For me, this is what I, I, I believe, that we as onlookers and, and, and supporters still have to respect that decision that they make because, I mean, it might not be in our liking and we question it and we have um, our doubts about it, but at the end of the day, sometimes people pay for learn and it's just a just fact of the matter. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I do believe also that it is also best to look at the percentages and the probability yeah. and the likelihood of being closer to success than not. Um, and if Brenna Liston does well at LSU, she would be a rarity, an anomaly. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something that normally happens because right. many great ones go to college as well and don't do as well. Clearly, Brianna's coach is taking his time with her, and hopefully, we will get the results that all of Jamaica would like to see. Um, but yeah, again, this is their decision, but we're just hoping that, um, for the country's sake, for their own personal sake, that it is the best decision in the interest of their future. Um, do you plan with the with the amount of stuff that you have um, on your on your plate? Uh, a big program as Heidel, you're thrust into a big program uh, of Calabar. If there was an opportunity for any of these athletes to return and, and sought your services, um, would you be open with the amount that you have to do? Would you be open to take on that challenge? It, it, would, it would depend on the circumstances around the person returning. Um, and how, how best it could work within one of those programs. Um, but to have it as a third wheel, so to speak, will be difficult. Um, it will mean that something or some persons will have to suffer. And that's not my mm -hmm. aim at that level for persons to get a major disadvantage. So it will mean that I'd have to give up something mm -hmm. or to go that route. Yeah. But you know, as you, as you mentioned, that you know, I. I, I saw a post on, on Facebook once that you are a very good coach but Calabar needs a full-time coach. 
What do you respond to or respond to that? Respond to what you are saying? I didn't, I didn't no, that, that comment. Um You heard the comment? No. You I, are a good coach, but Calabar needs a full time coach. I, I don't know what that means. So um, obviously well, what I'm deducting from that is um you, you having the head coach role at these two top high schools, you're not giving probably either of them that full hundred percent. The whole whole coming don't affect either. How is it we won our first championship when I started coaching Calabar? You know, I mean, persons are just obviously looking for reasons for when things happen. But I think the last two years, I think this year we probably scored the most points we ever scored on the girls' side. And last year we won our first title mm -hmm. um, while coaching Calabar. So, I mean, how do how do you explain that? I I think I think we're 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 there are things to be fixed at Calabar and, and things are being fixed. It was a young team, very inexperienced team, and we are growing together as a team. So oh. I think, you know, we, we had a good season again. We had a bad championship. Um, we had some injuries along the way that would have cost our, our chances in, in, in real life. But, you know, we're hoping to be better. I think we'll be better um, again next season. So... Yeah, we, we are, we're fully dedicated to that cause as well. All right. Um. So let's take some questions from the from the, from the chat room. Um, on screen there, Fabian gonna um you switch Bromwell to the um from the one hundred meters to the four hundred meters. What did you see? Why you um he made that decision, and it paid dividends because he went on to break a record that was held by Usain Bolt at the Carifter Games. Yeah, well, well, Nicole is a, is a special is a special um, athlete who, um, when I when I first met up met upon Nikoi, he, especially in the preseason training, the background training, the, in the general preparation part of the training, he showed the ability to sprint for longer than most, mm -hmm. um, and his start wasn't the best, so his first twenty or thirty meters, most times kept him wanting. But he was able to out sprint for longer than most um, persons, um, and we just based on what we're doing in training, his three hundred times were coming down closer to being a quarter miler than an out and out sprinter. Um, Nikoi can get up tomorrow and sprint him. You know? Nikoi is still a very good um, short sprinter. I just believe that converting to the longer sprint was up his um, his alley. And we, we tried a couple of things in training and it worked out. We just can't train him like a typical quarter miler, as we probably know him back in the day. We had mm -hmm. to train him without a speed element. Um, right. That's probably more, more more reps. And it worked out for, for, for Nikai. I think Nikai is... He, persons haven't seen the best of Nikai as yet. Um, unfortunately, he was injured probably just a week or so before champs. And we had to be very... We had to put him on the 200, first of all, um, just to have him last... To the, to the last day of champs um yeah i i think i i believe looking looking back at it now he it was really a good decision for him with another young man um Dwayne sharp who when i first told him about the 400 as a class three boy he said he can't do the four he's never done the 400. um this year i believe he would have won it barring a few things so I mean, it's, you know, what you do in primary school is just testament to, to the fact that you may be the fastest boy or girl in primary school. When you come to high school, probably your real talents and expertise can show um, as you you kind of broaden your horizons a little bit. And Bramble is just one such kid. Yeah. Right, and 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 he has been doing exceptionally well in 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 that event. So. Kudos to you on that on that um mega move. But as as you made mention of that to um coach, over the years I, I have noticed that you have prepared and developed some very good quarter milers, four hundred meter sprinters, mm. and also some very good sprint hurdlers. I Initially, you spoke about your ability 
or your involvement in the multi events would have caused you to you know have a little touch here and there of all the events but to me i want you to correct me if i'm wrong it seems to me that you have a knock for the quarter mile and the hurdles am i correct um you you, you may be correct i i think i I love both events because you can't just pick up somebody with natural ability to win these events. Mm -hmm. um, it does require a heavy portion of coaching and teaching. Um, and it, it's good when you can see somebody blossom like a, you know, caterpillar into a butterfly through these events. Um, you know, I've, we've, 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 I've been, I've been blessed to have, had some persons who bought into the philosophy of where, the way I coach the 400 um, and the way I coach the hurdles. And I, I think whatever unique, uniqueness I bring to those events have paid dividends. And I believe that, um, yeah, I, I think I have been blessed to have some good athletes to work with, both on the boys' side and the girls' side for all of these years. I know you're probably not going to give away too much, but is there a, a, a different strategy that you would have employed for the 400 meters other than the norm that you uh, probably would have known about, you'd have seen from the different coaches that you'd have worked with? I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not so sure what other coaches do. Uh, I just know that you can't prepare every quarter mile the same. Um, you do have some who come with a 400, 800 blend and mm -hmm. some a 200, 400 blend. Um, and you're going to have to coach them a little differently. Um, you know, I, I'd love any day I get an opportunity to, to carry persons face to face through what, what we do or what, what I think can be done to get the best out of it. All right. You can get a call again. You know that go again, you know. All right, people. So apparently, coach got another call, or the butcher dead, or something. But he's off. It, it seems to me now that this time around, the butcher die. All right. But people, if you're liking the conversation, if you like what you're hearing, just give the video a thumbs up if you have not done so. Share the content. You understand? If you're new, you can also subscribe to the channel. I think this is very good conversation and this is what we are about over here on the coaches as people we keep you updated on what's happening in the world of track and field and we also have times when we give you these content we have some robust discussion with the various coaches you understand so um ml shall we come into your question sorry about it yeah man you were right where you said that you'd love to um, have somebody who come on and see how you make the preparations. You hearing me? No, I'm not hearing you. So when you have something good enough, people, like you always face these technicalities, but these are the things that happen with um, technology, things like these. Things like these happen with technology, so be with us, people. Yeah, man, we're hearing you now, Coach. Great. So you were saying you'd love to, for somebody to come and see how you, you do the preparation. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm open to, to, to anybody who... Oh, your, your sound gone again, man. Look like something that happened, Coach. Coach, your sound gone again. No, not hearing you. You have to go bounce again and return. You're muted. No, that is not the problem. Look like it just gone. 
So just jump off and jump on back. That's the easier route. All right. All right, we see the questions that are coming in, in in abundance. All right, so we're having some some difficulties, and as I was saying earlier, these things happen with technology people. Um, yeah. But it was a it was a pretty decent um discussion. Um let's see if this one is up and running. Yes, coach. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, man, we're hearing you loud and clear. Okay, great. Yeah, man, these uh, things happen. We know we're we're working with technology, man made um devices. So these things will happen. You are open to anyone coming on. Yeah, I mean anybody who has questions that I think I can help, then I'm I'm open for that. Um, I think ultimately it will help um, our country's athletes if if it is that what I'm doing is of any use. So, um, yeah. All right. So um, we have a, a, a one of our what 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 I should say one of our panelists, um, Fabian, our co-host. Yeah. He, he he coaches at the the, the primary level, right? Yeah. And he said that. Um, Um, what's the difference in coaching girls from boys? If if you have any advice, um, you could share. Um, you know, I think the older the older they get, you know, we're gonna to have to separate how we write programs. Um, my my experience is that the girls tend to need more timeouts than the boys. Um, a lot of time, girls just tend to need more rest times. Um. Mm -hmm. They can't do too much for too long. <laughs> the boys have the ability to train a little longer. Um, the boys, you know, when, when I just started, because I, I also coach football as well, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that boys had so much emotions as the girls. Wow. I, I was limited to the girl, but the boys do share and have a whole lot of emotions that was surprising to me. Um, mm -hmm. And in, in a very similar way, they both you know, they both demand a lot of attention. Um, but the boys are very competitive, highly competitive. Yeah, yes, definitely. That is true. Yeah, the girls may be okay at times not standing out in training. The boys tend to want to stand out no matter what. Um, so the boys are highly competitive. Um, the boys bounce back quicker than the girls. If you get hard on a boy, he will bounce back quicker than sometimes the girls. Mm-hmm. And I get caught up a little bit sometimes with um, on the spot. Emotions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's any real crazy difference. Just I think boys can carry program a little longer. I think girls need more frequent breaks and shorter programs. Yeah. Okay. And there's another question from Everton. Fabian, I hope you answered your question. Everton Jackson is saying, does coaching Calabar hinders the development? of your male track and field athletes at Heidel? Um, it, coaching Calibre does not hinder that. I mean, I've always had a very small boys team at Heidel. Um, this last season, or well, the last two seasons, we probably had one male who happens to be my son. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he's, he's fine. He, he gets the attention he needs. I, I, I most times will merge him either way, either individually or merge him sometime with a with the Calabar program just for mm -hmm. the runs. Um so it doesn't it doesn't hinder it. Uh, we don't have a necessarily have a major boys culture at Heidel, but we hope in the future to develop develop one. Okay. Um how soon will Calabar be challenging for title honors again? That is from God's <laughs> gift. Um I, I thought it was going to be this year, to be honest. Um, but I know that we're still a young team. The majority of our class, when boys were in their first year, um, and whether we like it or not, we have we had a lot of 
loopholes that needed to be plugged. Um, but I, I want to say every year we go there, including this year and next year, we believe we can challenge, but I think we, we will have a more mature team and a, and a stronger team um, next season. So I hope we will be able to challenge in a better way next year. All right. Um, Sule Bell is saying, will Ali Abeka be back next year? Not as a high level athlete. <laughs> um, she's, she's, she's done now. Um, her her age wise, she's finished. So um, no, she won't be back next year. So you're planning on keeping her, or, or that is exclusive information? <laughs> ah, I, I don't have I don't have no such plans. I mean, you know, Alia has quite a few options, and let's see what she chooses to do. Okay, cool. Um, um, somebody said that if they were in Kingston, they would come over and try to get a little uh, of the knowledge from you. Um, how do you deal with athletes who are logging behind in the program? It depends on how consistently. Um, it depends on what is causing them to lag behind. Mm -hmm. um, Persons develop at different rates, um, and, and we may have to group them differently. Um, we can get the same end result, but we may have to go a different avenue. And as such, you, you, you definitely cannot train everybody on the same pace. You can't train everybody with the same amount of reps. And the same, they definitely can't train with the same intensity. So um, I may, like, I've had two half milers trained totally different, but they run similar times at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, we have to just be careful um, and what is causing them to lag behind. There are many persons who don't train well, but they compete well. And vice versa is also true. There are some persons who will kill in training and they don't compete well. So it just comes down to what is causing the person to lag behind. Is it a nutrition reason? Is it just a fact that the person is just doesn't doesn't recover as quickly as some? Um, because some person that longer rest time, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. So it just comes down to individual, but as long as the end results are proving to be what you want, then I wouldn't watch too much. Just change the grouping, um, increase the rest times, and probably sometimes you have to lower the intensity sometimes with athletes. Yeah, definitely. So, um, O'Shane, I hope that you would have answered that question about lagging behind. Um, another question from O'Shane. Have you ever thought of going to the senior ranks? Um, I thought about it probably for the first time last year with Alana. Um, when we took her to the senior trials, she made 100 meter finals. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought that we had a good shot at her doing well at the senior level. Um, that wasn't to be because, you know, again, her agents and herself chose a different route. Um, and we wish her all the best. But yeah, I've thought about it. It's not something that I'm hung up on, to be honest. So, Coach, it's, it's so like that that kind of, as as we say in Jamaica, you know, hit your chip or lick your chip. Um, uh, no, I mean... You know, if you, if you, if you, if you know the stories about persons like Curry Cahill, mm -hmm. Hill, I was blindsided by Curry Cahill, um, especially with somebody who I thought was a good friend of mine. Um, so yeah, that, that was more a blindsided moment. Mm -hmm. um, the truth is, Alana's mother wanted her to stay locally with myself and her and herself involved. Um, but things just never went according to our plans. Okay. All right. So it, it, it's good to know that um, there's no animosity there with, 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 with the mom. And you and her are still communicate, right? Or there's no... Yeah. Still, the, the athlete. Oh, yeah, man. We, we still... we still. She came... She's, she's done for champs. She came for champs. And, you know, there's no reason why Alana can't come around the team. She's still a part of us. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we genuinely wish her all the best. We want her to make it to the next level. So we were, we would have felt a lot of disappointment in her run on the weekend, but we're confident that Alana will bounce back to being Alana. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Because sometimes when, when, when relationships sever, you know, sometimes you have some, some bad blood, and it's, it's good to know that that one is not really like that. No, you understand? No, we're good. We're good. All right. Um, Rob Smith is saying, if Idel become bigger on the boys' side, doesn't it become become like a conflict of interest? Two teams at the same championship. I mean, it definitely would be. Um, 
it's almost like coaching either the mining club team and caliber mining club team it's, it just wouldn't work um as it is now um it doesn't exist um but if in the future it exists then a decision will have to be made on my side yeah okay all right um marcus we we he answered that question already it seems as if he's focusing on 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 the juniors at the moment but again i think he had made mention of uh it depending on the circumstance if somebody were to come back home and and, and approach him and um coach the people them said so they get a lot of gems from from the conversation you know so kudos to you no on, on 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 answering those those seemingly tough questions and you seem not phased by even answering the the, the the tough one so 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 let me segue until i get a, a, another uh, or not segue backtrack a little bit um before i see another question in the chat room kerika hill did you have plans for her in terms of the senior level or it was just wanting her to complete her, her year of years of eligibility um i always felt that if i were to transition initially as a coach to the mm -hmm. senior level um i would i would have wanted to have started somebody like karika because i had karika from she was about seven mm -hmm. at high and and i knew her and her family i well i thought i did inside out um i thought i knew her, all of her shortcomings and what made her click um and yeah i i, I was hoping that based on, on what we achieved at the junior level we could have taken some of that expertise and bettered it towards the senior level um Karika could have competed at champs this year and Karika ran 12 7 two years ago so just by natural progression you'd want to assume that probably should have been in 12 5 or better shape at the high school level um that would have been phenomenal and um it's something that we we, we I, I i wanted to see i wish we could have seen but it just wasn't to be <clears throat> yeah definitely that would have been uh something good for us to see as patrons and and coach likewise um will you develop a club for professional athletes or are you solely for oh that question was answered already um marcus um how this question from oshane again how do you persuade athletes who are reluctant to train but you see potential in them um you know it depends on what i believe is the end game um if i think that they're, they're reluctant to train and i don't see much hope or much, or much scope then it's a done deal you know they can't stop but i believe that we have a lot of really good sprinters especially don't like to train um alana reed is one such person she didn't like to train alana liked when we put on spikes and it's time to just do the short stuff um so it's, it's about changing the carrot it's about dangling a different carrot in front of them um, it's about breaking down general prep programs into smaller groups into smaller batches so instead of giving somebody three three hundreds you may give them probably six one fifties um and it's cut on the rest time um so it's a matter of just changing it up a little bit um adjusting um the distances and just making it more fun for them you know i i believe in track and field has got to be probably the most boring sport ever for an athlete so I believe if you add add some fun elements to it, add some rewards to even training, then I believe you can get a little different out of some of these kids who just don't really want to train, especially especially in the early part of the program. All those three hundreds and two fifties and one eighties and one fifties is not very attractive to them. But uh, when they understand why they need to do it, they just just break it up, break it up a little bit, and you probably get more out of the athlete without them even knowing. Yeah, man, I, I've said, I've, I echo that same sentiments about track and field being very boring. Um, the repetition in training can, can be awful, but I mean, like you said, you have to find innovative ways to, you know, get them uh, motivated to, 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 to continue. Um, Toki, True Blue, is saying, why idle athletes have poor running technique? Example, Alana Reed. I mean, Alana Reed ran 1092. 
So go figure. If you have a poor running technique around 1092, then keep the poor running technique. I mean, what is proper running technique? Everything is a means to an end. So, um, however, I don't think Michael Johnson had good running technique based on what we know. But Michael Johnson was one of the best and greatest ever laser of a pair of spikes. Um, I don't think Heidel had a poor running technique. That's just from a personal point of view. I've heard otherwise from other persons, but if if is it tacky? If True Blue believes we have poor in technique, um, then probably I'm willing and open to hear suggestions as to how to fix it. But my belief is if you have poor running technique and running so fast, then you might want to keep the poor running technique. <laughs> I love that answer, Coach. All right, Marcus, will you help to groom any young and upcoming coaches who wishes to learn and become a coach in the future? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, I've had a lot of young persons around me um, who have developed in um, their own skill set. Um, and I'm going on to do very well right now as we speak. Um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm open to, to persons, you know, sending me emails, you know, sending, give me a call, WhatsApp, whatever. I'm, I'm open to develop young coaches because I believe, you know, we won't be doing this thing forever. <laughs> and, but track and field has to continue. And I think that as long as a coach is willing to listen um, and open to suggestions, then I am, I'm more than willing to, to have persons learn what I know. I mean, I don't think I know a lot, but I think I may know something that I can impart on, on some young persons. All right. Um, how do you deal with poor sportsmanship? Coach, you have to tell me when you're ready, you know, because these people will go <laughs> all, all, all night. You know. we not, well, we normally do the show for two hours, but yeah. whenever you're ready, just let me know and we can, we can, we can sh close it down. All right. Um, how do I do poor sportsmanship? Um, I've had very small amounts of that. Um, it's not something that I fest a lot. We, we believe a lot in, in, in team. I believe, you know, so let me just declare it. I think football is the greatest sport ever. And I believe that... Say that, say that again, coach. I believe football is the greatest sport ever. Um, I, you know, it's my jersey, right? My football jersey, right? But... um. I, I think I believe a lot. Hold well, on, I wish Chris that you know say all along me think of Idol Chris with uh, the Nike. But Inter Milan. Um, oh, Inter. Me, me think I think I the ten team at that. But, um, <laughs> I believe I believe if you create the atmosphere for persons to be okay not excelling, and a family atmosphere for persons to each one to teach one and each one to help one. It somewhat cuts down the poor sportsmanship because sometimes poor sportsmanship is developed from training and your own training group. Um, most of these persons act out in the public. It is something they, they started from, from, from their own home training in terms of their local training. Um, I don't have much of those, to be honest. I mean, let me just be very honest about that. And I think once it pops up, it is dealt with right away and it is, it is squashed immediately. So, um, I, I don't really have much answers to that because I don't really have much of it to deal with, to be honest. Um, in terms of of I think uh, you you made mention of this earlier, and about in terms of the nutrition and the medical aspect of of our athletes, do you believe that we have the facilities and the expertise to really? cater to some of these um issues that we have because sometimes athletes seem to even going into the senior um career with with, with not injuries that they basically would have gotten from high school they would have gotten treatment for it but yet still it still comes around um i i think we have some of the best physiotherapists massage therapists um, orthopedic doctors. Um, I believe we have, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when I listen to my athletes who go overseas, um, they are begging for the day when they can get one of our masseuses to come and get them a massage. So we're already at a, at a high school level ahead of even most colleges. 
or quite a few colleges and even professional programs where they can't get a, a team of suits to come around and, and massage the, the team. Um, so I think in terms of, from a, from a medical standpoint, I think we're right there. Um, the affordability is just the next thing. Um, in terms of nutrition, I think not many teams can afford to feed the athletes the way they are required to be fed. Um, and I think the, I don't want to use the word richer school, but a school with better funding um, will always and most times do better generally because they're able to feed the athletes and, and, and sports person a little easier, a little better. Um, but I just, I just wish persons would find more creative and innovative ways to get their nutrition up. Um, and hopefully, when they understand what is required from an athlete standpoint, then they will think that they will see that there's no need to go through expensive stuff to get proper nutrition. Um, Kalalu is a good source of iron, for example. Liver is a good source of iron. Um, banana. So, I mean, I think once they understand what is needed, then we can get persons to be fed um, or nourished properly um, with less, less, lesser cost than is most times anticipated. In the annals of Jamaica's track and field coaching, how do you rank yourself, Coach Bennett? I don't rank myself at all, to be honest. Um, I, I've seen so many great persons before me and even now um, that have achieved some remarkable things. I, I believe and I try my best to learn every year. As a matter of fact, I may go as far as I try to learn every day um, something new. I may keep 80% of my core programs, but I'm always willing to adjust 20% of it every year. And I think that once I keep trying and I yearn for more and I, and I read a lot and I tend to study a lot, <laughs> um, just ways of getting things better, um, then I, I just believe that there are many persons who are far more invested or far more accomplished than I could ever be. But I'm just thankful that I'm able to achieve what I've been able to achieve because I think I've had a good support system around me, both from an athlete standpoint and a coaching and school standpoint. All right, good. Um, Samantha is asking, um, as a male coach, how is it much harder to deal with um, the females? I think that is what she's, she's asking. I have learned. I have learned to deal with the females in a very firm and strict way. Um, a lot of females sometimes run from my program because they think I am too strict. Um, but I just believe that's the way I get success out of female athletes, um, just by being strict and being very firm. And I, we do have a lot of fun when it's downtime, because as I said, the sport is so boring in and of itself that you have to No, once a call come in, we're not going to hear. People, Coach Bennett is on Coach's desk. I want to just wait till the show finish in the next few minutes before I call him. All right? So. I think this 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 conversation, as as Fabian alluded to, is it's it's a very very um, refreshing conversation. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I promise. Next time, if I'm if I'm allowed back, I use I use a laptop next time. The phone. All is right. No 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 problem, man. Of you 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 are always welcome, man. Don't 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 um say if you're welcome back. <laughs> the people I'm like the vibes because um this no we're not here again. Your son gone. Uh, 
you did it once, you have to do it twice. Yeah, people, it's a very good conversation. It's a, it's a, it's a different, refreshing type of a talk we have um, on the show. I'm going to like it, honestly. See people in the comment section, so they will learn. And this is one of our, our, our mandates, you know, people. So that people can have an understanding on, of, of a lot of things. You get what I mean, sir? Very, very good. I miss most of it, but I, I learned a lot from the short time I'm here. Yeah, man, and you can always um, watch the playback, you know. Yes, coach. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I might have been saying how, how we deal with female athletes. It's yes, just, yes. And some tough love. But mm -hmm. understanding that there are females that need to have a father figure most times, so most of them don't have a father figure around. Um, but I think I, I'm, I'm a very strict person, especially with the females. Um, some believe sometimes I'm too strict, but I think that's the best way for me to deal with and get the best out of these athletes um, while in high school. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, what, what sort of pressure do you, 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 you feel being head coach of two top schools? Um... I don't feel any pressure at Heidel at all. Um, sometimes at Calabar, there is pressure from obviously past students and 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 persons around the program. But I, I don't let it get to me to the point where it doesn't allow me to function the way I think I need to function. Um, has I it think, ever gotten you out of character? It has. Um, but I, I quickly come back into my own because I know what I'm trying to achieve. Um, and yeah, hopefully, again, it will be better this year, coming this next season coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it, you're going to put basically a stronghold, a uh, foothold on, on whatever those little nuances were last season. Um, we're going to try. We're going to try. Okay. But... All right. Fair enough. Um, Sue Miller is asking if you learn how to coach in Jamaica or, well, the, the question is in Jamaica. Did you learn to coach in Jamaica? Well, I, I think my initial coaching started while I was in college in New York, um, just coaching amongst myself and teammates. Um, but my formal coaching came when I came back home to Jamaica. Yeah. All right. Um, any more questions, people? Any more questions? All right. Um, to 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 bring a little transparency, people. We we we, we when we when we asked, um I spoke to Coach Bennett. We said normally it's between forty-five to one hour, and right now we're there one forty-three. So. We really <laughs> exceed the time. Well, coach, you know when track and field conversation go on, you know, it 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 tend to be a little bit, a little elaborate, so to speak. I and um, I really appreciate um the the, the 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 level of conversation because persons are message me messaging me privately. Persons have been putting in in the chat room that you know they are, they are learning a lot of things and. Somebody did say also that you're, you're, you're spitting a lot of gems. So, yeah, I, I really wish I could help more. I mean, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. open for questions, even privately, as, as best as I think I can answer. So, um, so, so, so you, 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 you did say that you'll um, make yourself available through email or um, any social media you, you want to share those so that um persons can 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 persons who are interested in in coaching in you know, learning i always um give my email address c-o-r-e-y is corey s-g bennett at gmail.com c-o-r-e-y s-g b-e-n-n-e-t-t -T at gmail.com i mean i can always answer those pretty much right away um, so no e at the end at gmail right at gmail.com right 
that's pretty much what is consistent to me. Um, yeah. So that that's is. C-O-R, it's correct, right? Yeah, that's correct. All right. The persons can feel free. If, if there's anything I can answer, then I'll be happy to. Mm-hmm. Um, Chuck, Chuck Universe, he said there's no big difference to him. That's his perspective. Uh, just, just share um, that again, Coach. Is there a difference? Or the person asks, is there a lot of difference um, with coaching pro athletes from high schoolers? Again, you know, I've never coached a pro athlete. <laughs> so, um, but just based on my observations, um, I think it's just a matter of spending more time doing something to do in high school. Um, going a little deeper is almost like c sec to Cape. I'm just going a little deeper in what you've been doing, um, paying yeah. attention to detail a little bit more, um, and just understand that results are what you're judged by at a professional life. Um, it's not necessarily what you're judged by at a high school life, but I think um, just again, just from observation, that you just need to go a little deeper into what you're doing, spend a little more time, pay attention to nutrition a lot more, and also to strength training a lot more. Um, but I think it's just going a little bit deeper. And I think it really, if I were to like it, to probably see second Cape and probably beyond Cape <laughs> in some regards. Mm -hmm. It's just really going another level up on what you've been doing um, through high school. But if you, look, if you look at most professional coaches now, Stephen Francis started at Wilmers. Um, Glenda started at Camperdown. So I think it's just almost a transition up from from what they've been doing. And obviously they've mastered what they've been doing and right. they're probably a doctorate level. <laughs> but <I laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It starts just, just transitioning up from what you've been doing. Uh, I mean, I, I asked you about the, the, the coaching certification or coaches education um, earlier. But do you think that the knowledge that they give at these or the information that they share at these um, coaching seminars, you think they are adequate enough to really um, propel coaches to the next level? Because some coaches I know probably are just at level one and they are doing a tremendous job than even better than coaches who might have the, the, the level five, which is the PhD of Chuck and Phil. Yeah, I mean, not to sound too controversial. I, I mean, I think mm -hmm. the education just prove that you can be trained. Um, I don't That's necessarily... It means how good a coach you'll ever be. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I have seen enough experiences to know that some person with the highest level of certifications are getting the least amount of results. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it just, again, it comes a lot, comes a lot to just the individual and how, well, how willing they are and how, how much they are to, 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 to get their information across to athletes and help, able to teach them. Um, being certified just means that you're official. <laughs> Official <laughs> do what you do, but I think a lot of coaches coach from instinct. A lot of coaches coach from a personal view and personal experiences, um, and I think that it doesn't necessarily mean that the higher level of certification that you're the, you're a higher level coach. I don't think mm -hmm. it yeah. Because um, I mean, you're judged based of 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 production. It's more of a production type of a, a job. Yeah, and, and and you're going to be judged based off that production. It's not about uh, the the wit that you write the program with. It's about how you basically uh, disseminate that information that you write down so that you can get a a, a, a very good result with these charges. So it, it it's for me yeah. it's a, it's more of production rather than. Uh, but but I I still do believe that the knowledge is important. It, yes. It's just that. The, the the coaches who would have gotten this information should not be a slave to the information because in coaching of course you're going to bring out your own philosophy and like you initially said uh five coaches might get the same program and when you look at it the performance of those five athletes would have been different because i mean there's some probably tweak to it there's some um sort of adjustment to it that will cause the athletes to perform because of the individuals they are at the same time. So it's also in John on who, who you have in front of you. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, again, 
you know, it is, it is coaching, just like teaching is very individualistic. Mm -hmm. um, it comes down to the person carrying out the program and, and writing the program and adjusting the program. Um, so it just comes down to a very individual nature of the person. Yeah, man, absolutely. So, um, people, is there any more questions? Coach, talk to us about Olympics. Since as since as the people them now the question may have the questions I mean, so but I try to include them in other thing. So we have um our ladies, our men, United States and and of course other countries the uh, the Saint Lucia, the the Great Britain with Adina Asha Smith. Um, ho, ho, what's your take on? I mean, just from a fans' perspective, take out take out the coaching hat now. And just give me from a fan's ex well, you still have to give a little expertise because you, you can't come out of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh tell us tell us what your thoughts about um our 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 basically running um coming up this Olympics. Um, you know, I, I think we again on, on the female side we're gonna be blessed with, with, with having the services of our three most noted um sprinters. Um, but again, you know, I think young Brianna may crack the code. Um, Take over the upper card. Yeah, or, or she may just be a good member of that relay team. Um, mm -hmm. But Brianna, I don't remember her last name though. <laughs> but the young lady I used to train with, um, Freta, um, she, she oh, changed. Oh, Williams. Brianna Williams, right? Um, mm -hmm. still, um change camps we don't know how well that will help her or, or, or affect her but she's also somebody you have to look out for and there are many other young ones who we can expect to come back and and do well um so we, we do have the talent pool is still there um we have the NCAA champion at 60s and you do have the greats i think all three ladies would have been sub 10 8 and even one sub 10 6. so um, i think we do have some some persons as long as everybody stays healthy um yeah we should we should be able to put together another good showing especially on the female side of the sprints um we won the last major um senior title at the hurdles with daniel williams um and we do have so many other young ladies who should come and turn up i mean not to mention the male hurdles especially mm -hmm. the hurdles so yeah I, I, again you know because these, these championships come seem to come so back to back you won't see a lot of persons losing form um mm -hmm. They tend to be back to back, and I, and I think pretty much what we've seen the last last year is what a little bit more of what we'd expect again going forward. Um, Shakaria won the hundred last mm -hmm. year. Shakaria will be so lucky this year. She's um, not gonna be so lucky. I don't believe she will. Um, well, let's see. Let's see. It should be fun. Yeah. Be fun again. Definitely. Um, on the male side. I'm, I'm, I'm dying to see our male sprinters. Um, MVP has a young man who I believe ran 9.8. Yeah, 9.85. Yeah. Um, Shane Thompson. Shane Thompson, right. Um, mm -hmm. And he just never ran at, 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 at a senior level in terms of championship. Um, I think they're trying to take the time with that young, young man. Um, and I believe once he gets going and, and just the trust in the program at, at, at MVP and the coaches there, I believe it's, that's going to be the next young man who will stand on the podium for us. Um, you know, we'll always have the oblique civils who are, who are still young, the Akeem Blakes um, who are still young. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm dying to see what our 9-9 high school record holder will do this year. I mean, he seems to be fit the last time I saw him on a 400 mm -hmm. season. I, I'm, I'm expecting if he comes back in any shape like his high school years, it's going to be fun to watch. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be great. But and I want to just switch to a, to a, to a young man from Botswana, mm -hmm. who I believe will be the person to beat. I've always liked him from a, from a, from, from the world, his world on the 20 days. Mm -hmm. and I, range is crazy and i Very. think will be the person for persons to, to catch yeah so essentially you're saying that 
that three gold medals that um, Mr. Lies has planned for. The the apple cart might be upset. Yeah, I, I, I don't see him winning, especially the 100. And I think it he won't be a shoo-in to win the 200 either with that Botswana young man. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Fabian, Fabian, uh, uh, the co-host, one of the co-hosts is, is, is smiling right now. Because that's one of his athletes that he has been talking about, you know. Because yeah. <laughs> he's going to be ridiculous. Yeah. But, but coach, you know, one of the things that I observe with him, um, and you said something that, that, that jumped out at me, you know. You said that Nikoi was able to hold his speed for longer. Hence the reason why you thought that he, he would have done well at the 400 meters, with other things too. Yeah. Um. I have always believed that even though Tiboga is running so fast, I still believe because of his mechanics and how he runs, he he, he fits the bill of, of, of a 4-2 and he ran 44-2. Well, as I said, you know, he, he's, he's what we call the... Um, hybrid. <laughs> he's yeah. a who, who can do anything he settles on. Um, he will do great. I, I believe that if, if, if you say Bolt ran the 400 and took it seriously, he would have broken the world record. Mm -hmm. He do have at his quarters that good. I believe if if Brian Alliston were to run the 400, especially as a high school kid, she would have broken the high school record. Mm -hmm. um, they do find persons who do have the innate ability to, to, to cover a lot of different events, especially from one to four, and do, do it with relative ease. They they are both similar in how they run. They they run with relative ease. Mm -hmm. Relative ease is typical of somebody who runs the four hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you notice that a lot of these four hundred type of athletes are now down to the sprint, stepping down. Yeah, um, when you look at the young lady who won the character under twenty, um, mm -hmm. that's just a perfect example. Yeah, you know? Fred Curley, you said bold. Um, so you know, I think I think the whole notion of who runs the sprints has changed yes and they're, okay they're, they're dealing with some relatively great success all right so uh in terms of uh, world athletics move to have the world championship every year is it something that you agree with yeah i mean you know i can be good um at the age of 27 and by the time i reach 28 i'm off mm -hmm. so have it every year is just fair to them it is their championship it is their life um they don't have club football <laughs> that yeah. they play. i mean and if persons were to rely only on the world cup then they'll be dead um so i believe having it every year is is just good for the sport and good for the individual earnings of the athlete yeah um, definitely i think it improves their earning because you know the world championship is where awards right right definitely yeah. Um, Coach Bennett, I think this was a very wholesome conversation. Yeah, man, I appreciate um, I, I, I really appreciate you stopping by to have this conversation with us. The people are pleased, and it's that is always the intention, you know, to put together something like this to ensure that the audience is 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 well pleased. Um, appreciate you coming, dropping your gems, sharing with us even making yourself available to, you know, uh, have a young coach understudy your sharing information because I've always said that um, knowledge, not um, not shared is no knowledge at all. You yeah. understand? So certainly this is a good look that you are also making yourself available for persons who are interested in, in owning their craft yeah. to, to, to learn a thing or two from you. Um, any final um, words you want to uh, share before we uh, close? Because it's like two hours now, and I like to extend the program past two hours. Yeah. Um, um, for the watchback purpose. Just, just find your own niche. Um, find your your own pathway to being the best version of yourself. Um, always try to be better than your previous best. Um, don't settle. Don't be okay if you had success this year. Try and have more success next year. Um, 
And it's always read, always research, always strive for more, but always maintain humility um, because there will always be somebody better than you. Um, and be very respectful in the game for persons who've been there before and persons to come. Yeah. Yeah, love and honor all the time. All right. Big up yourself, coach. I appreciate that. And people, this is the end of a wonderful conversation. And I'm certain that um, whenever we ask Coach Bennett to, to return, um, uh, uh, once he's not busy, definitely I don't think he'll hesitate. Um, uh, thanks for being a, a wonderful audience as well. Uh, big up on yourself. Stay safe, people. And until next time, definitely we look forward to doing more of this for you as we continue to um, ensure that the coaches are highlighted and they are sharing their story with the wider public. Because sometimes you, you see the athletes, but you don't see the coach. And um, Sir Bennett, it's good for them to now see the, 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 the face behind and the mind and the thought and the words behind uh, uh, Alana Reed and, and others that you would have uh, worked with over the years. So until next time, people, stay safe. Peace out. Your style and your flavor make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach Minzy, best round here. Remember that.